Thank you. So my name is Mark. Uh, I'm working at CEA. Uh, we are a, a French organization, and in particular, we install uh, one of the two exascale systems in Europe uh, in a few years. Um, <coughs> and uh, I will talk about uh, Wi-Fi MPI, that is a library uh, we are developing at CEA. And I'm here with my uh, uh, colleague uh, Edgar Lyon uh, from uh, Livermore Laboratory, uh, with uh, whom I'm collaborating. So first of all, uh, what is Wi-Fi MPI? So you probably know that uh, uh, MPI has a single uh, API, but it has several ABIs. There are at least three different ABIs, uh, OpenMPI, MPitch, MPC. MPitch is uh, great in some sense because they are, uh, they they succeeded in uh, gathering uh, different uh, ABI uh, and uh, so MPitch and VPitch, Intel MPI, they're all using the same ABI. But if you look at OpenMPI, even between different versions of OpenMPI, you don't have the same uh, ABI necessarily. So it's kind of a nightmare and it means that in general, uh, MPI libraries are incompatible and it's true even for the simplest elements like, uh, like a communicator. If you look at OpenMPI and MPitch, in one uh, you have an integer, in the other you have a struct. So it means that in many cases, if you want to switch between uh, libraries, you have to uh, recompile. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not. And containers are uh, really great examples of uh, a use case where it's not really uh, doable because it kind of breaks the idea of uh, portability. You want to have your containers to ensure a better portability. And if you have to recompile everything in your container every time you change uh, the MPI, uh, it's a loss. <coughs> so what we are doing with Wi-Fi MPI is that we are translating uh, between uh, ABI, uh, MPI ABI. So the idea is that uh, if, you, if you want to make an MPI call, uh, what you will do is that uh, you will uh, you will catch w we will catch the call. We will translate the input arguments from the origin to this to the destination ABI. Then we will uh, actually do the call in the destination ABI, and then we will go back and translate back the, outp uh, the output arguments and uh, uh, and the return value from the destination ABI to the uh, to the origin ABI. So to do that, we are trapping calls, uh, uh, injecting the libraries. <coughs> Uh, with uh, LD preload. Uh, so it means that, uh, generally speaking, it's better if uh, your application is dynamically linked uh, because we need to be able to trap uh, those calls. Uh, static link, uh, we, we cannot do it. And uh, in other cases, we can work around, but the better uh, is if it's uh, dynamically linked. Uh, so now how you can use it, uh, generally speaking. So I give uh, examples using Slurm. Uh, we have a wrapper, so you can just, uh, instead of S run your app, you can S run uh, using the wrapper Wi-Fi MPI, and you say from which uh, implementation to which implementation you want to go. Uh, that's one way of doing it. The other way is to just define uh, a few environment uh, uh, variables. The most important one is, of course, the LD preload you have uh, uh, in the end, and then you can just S run your app. And actually, that's the way uh, with containers. Uh, if since in containers it's kind of easy to inject uh, environment variables, as soon as you can do that, you can use Wi-Fi MPI, inject uh, Wi-Fi MPI in your container, and uh, gain portability. So <coughs> there are two two modes uh, to use Wi-Fi MPI. Actually, I will uh, discuss it uh, in a few slides, uh, showing how to work with uh, those uh, modes uh, with containers. In terms of installation, it's just uh, it's very simple. It's CMAC based. Uh, we also have a SPAC recipe. So if you're using SPAC, just SPAC install a Wi-Fi MPI and you're good to go. Uh, and so Wi-Fi MPI is a, a project we, we started to work on in, uh, in 2016. Uh, it's open source. It's on GitHub. Uh, you're more than welcome to try to test it to, uh, to open issues. We're, we are very happy with issues. Uh, and it's an ongoing co collaboration uh, with the uh, Lawrence Livermore Laboratory um, in the US. So now, uh, how can you use it? So as I said, there are two modes. The first one is the interface mode. The, in the idea of the interface mode is to have a stub MPI implementation. So you will compile your application against Wi-Fi MPI, and then at, run at runtime, you will choose which one you'll use. Uh, so you can actually do that with containers. It, uh, so if you have the full access of your container, you can decide to build the application that are uh, inside your containers with Wi-Fi MPI, and then <coughs> you're good to go. Uh, at, uh, at runtime, you will uh, choose uh, the host-optimized MPI as the target MPI. Uh, 
The main pro is that your, new, your newly built container uh, can run anywhere as soon as you have a Wi-Fi MPI available on your cluster. The con is that uh, it requires the full control of the container and, and that's not always the case. But that's an interesting work case uh, and uh, our friends at uh, Livermore are looking at this kind of things. Uh, the other way is uh, what I call the bring your own container. Uh, the idea is that you take any container you like, uh, go on the uh, Docker Hub, uh, NVIDIA, uh, uh, <coughs> a registry container. You launch your container with Wi-Fi MPI with the way I, I showed you using the envi envi environment variable and you select the host optimized MPI as the target MPI uh, at runtime. So the pro uh, is that nothing uh, has to be done uh, on the container side, so you don't have to modify at all your container. Uh, the con is that you have to hope for uh, dynamic linking, uh, else you're stuck. Uh, I'm done. <coughs> yeah, and so I have a few examples. And actually, if I have uh, one minute left, yeah, I have one minute left. So let's go to a real, uh, real example. Uh, so this one is uh, we had users who really wanted to use the Intel optimized uh, TensorFlow uh, for training on the CPU instead of GPU because hey, we have lots of TPUs too, so you can we can use it to to train uh, models. <coughs> uh, we did it on uh, the Jolio Query cluster, that is one of the clusters we're using, uh, so uh, it's uh, a Skylake uh, cluster. Uh, we were using the Peacock container, uh, container runtime that is developed at CEA. The Intel TensorFlow container is the, the one I mentioned here, and it's uh, using uh, MPitch. So, uh, in terms of uh, configuration, and, uh, and uh, it's easy with Peacock to to uh, define uh, to inject environment variables. So it's just a YAML file. Sorry, back to YAML. Uh, but once you 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 done that, uh <coughs> it's really easy uh, to launch the container. So here I show you an example. I loaded a uh, few modules I need. So. Uh, I, d the main point is that I, I'm loading Wi-Fi MPI and I say that I'm going from MPH to OpenMPI. And then uh, we have a wrapper to launch containers transparently. Uh, there is the name of my container, Intel TensorFlow uh, 2.14. Uh, I'm using the module I defined here so to say that I want to go from MPH to OpenMPI. And that's the result I got. So it's not very. Uh, if, if you're used to this kind of results with a GPU, it's not. Uh, it, it's it's not uh, enormous. But uh, if then, since we have uh, hundreds of thousands of cores, it starts to be interesting. And if we compare with what we had, uh, with the version we had installed on our cluster that was not Intel optimized, uh, basically uh, it's almost a factor of three in terms of uh, speed up. So in ca it kind of makes sense to use this container. Uh, to train models uh, on CPUs. So that's it for me. Thank you. <coughs> so I have a question for why for MPI. So you showed um, it's running like three times faster with open MPI than compared with MPitch. So this is a contrast to uh, all the benchmarks because the MPIs should be more or less uh, similar uh, in, in performance. So what happened? Yeah, so here the, the, the performance issue was not uh, linked to, uh, to MPI, it was linked to the, uh, to the uh, ten optimized TensorFlow. Because the, the, the two difference, the, the first I show with the, uh, that was faster, it's the Intel optimized TensorFlow. The other one is the one that is installed on our cluster that we are installing for all our users, and it's more GPU optimized than uh, CPU optimized. The, the, the only thing is that, um, uh, on our clusters, we we are open we are an uh, open MPI based cluster, so we support very well open MPI and pitch, uh, not so much. So the idea was to be able to run it efficiently using our um, uh, our host optimized uh, MPI. Did not try to run MPitch just like uh, with libfabric providers to access the underlying fabric. Uh, actually, I could have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, we could have because with the with the, the container uh, runtime you are using, that is Peacock, it's pretty easy to to do these kind of things. But it was funnier to use Wi-Fi MPI. It was a great use case for us. But there, there are in this specific case, we we could have other way uh, around. 
Uh, I also have a question to Y4MPI. Um, so we very often run into the problem that we have proprietary software um, running in containers um, which do their own MPI wrappers or MPI calls. So <coughs> um, when you do that, you don't land in the container. Do you think that Y4MPI would be uh, a solution for that? Really, that was one of our uh, first use cases. Uh, the, the two main use cases we had before containers were uh, proprietary software because we have guys uh, comes with uh, this kind of things with uh, uh, and the, we had issues with the MPI and we needed to use our own MPI. The other issue that is linked to that is that uh, we we have clusters with BXI, which is a very specific interconnect. And uh, right now, basically, only OpenMPI supports BXI. So if you have an application compiled with MPH, there are no ways to to run it. So uh, that was the, our first uh, use cases. Uh, and now, of course, containers are another use, good use cases, but yeah, proprietary, proprietary software. Uh, s with some proprietary software, we still have issues because some of them are using uh, dinosaur uh, MPA implementation and uh, we cannot work around that. Oh, and I, bro I brought stickers, so if you want uh, to have a nice Wi-Fi MPA sticker, they are uh, in the front. Right.